Hey, Hipster. Now, today is a very reflective video that I want to show you how to go to Walt Disney World, or better yet, just think about going to Walt Disney World by yourself without being afraid. Now, this is more of a reflective video because I want to show you the seven reasons why you should travel solo. And this can be applied to just traveling by yourself, or it can be applied to going to Walt Disney World. But of course, I'm the theme park hipster, so I'm gonna focus on Disney today. But these are just the reflections that I've kind of come across over the last decade of traveling solo, and I hope you enjoy. The first reason why you should think about going to Disney and not being intimidated about it is that it allows for self-discovery. What I have realized on my solo trips is just how capable I am. I know that when I first started out, I was extremely intimidated about going to any kind of theme park alone, especially Disney. And although my solo travels didn't necessarily start with Disney, it started with Universal by force because I really wanted to be there for the Harry Potter grand opening. I can't see myself not doing it anymore. When you are traveling solo, there are a lot of things that kind of make you have to force yourself to get into that decision mode. Now this may seem very small to you, but a lot of us can be dependent on people to help navigate our life. It makes you dig deep, deep, deep into those deepest insecurities, whether it's getting on test track and thinking, are they about to put that person next to me? Oh my God, he's sitting next to me. <laughs> I know it may be funny, I know it may be comical, but it makes you kind of get that sense of self-discovery where you just look over to the person and say, hello, how are you? Or you just give them the nod because solo travel is just one of those things that you get a lot of unexpected situations presented to you and you have to figure out how to navigate them. My next reason why I want you to be okay with going to Disney without being intimidated by it is that you should just be happy with imperfection. Now, if you are some person that you may be a type A where you have to plan, 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 you have to check all those things off your list so that it all makes sense for you, then solo travel will definitely, ah, ah, it's gonna unravel that. And I'm not trying to make it seem worse, but you have to be okay with the perfectly imperfected times of your trip. And as with any trip, you can plan all you want, but things do change. And on that solo trip, you are already anxious enough about what to expect, how to get from hotel to theme park, what kind of transportation are you gonna take? And all those anxious things can kind of already weigh heavily on you. But I always tell you that you should just be okay with having your plan, definitely have your plan out, but be okay if things do change. Next realization I have come with my Disney World travels that have kind of helped me get over just traveling alone in general is the growth that I have definitely noticed in myself. Like, as I mentioned, this is a quite personal and reflective video where I kind of talk to you about, you know, my personal thing, my business, but the growth that I have experienced with going to Walt Disney World alone, and not just Disney, but because I go there a lot more, and this is why I'm focusing on it, is that I get a little bit more confident talking to people. Now, if you meet me, you might think, oh, you're always confident to talk to people, but talking to people, it really has to, you really gotta pull it out of me. It's not something that I like to do because, and I know this term is used a lot, but I am an introvert that has extrovert tendencies that, well, I survive outside of my comfort zone when I have to, and that means sparking up conversations with people even when I don't feel like I want to. And I can remember being at Animal Kingdom one time in line, and this guy had his two little kids and we were waiting for a flight of passage, and he was like, oh, your party didn't want to come with you? I was like, oh no, I'm by myself. He was like, what? And I just remember realizing I have been doing this for a while that I don't even realize it. I was just on my phone scrolling, you know, you do things in your solo travel just to kind of occupy your time. But his look was so amazed because here he was with two little ones and I'm pretty sure he was having a good time. But at that time I realized that he never thought about coming to Walt Disney World by himself. And now I left that mark on him just because I was there and I was confident and I was okay with being alone. And I can remember when a cast member was like, we're looking for a party of one. And he was like, here's one. I was like, okay, thank you guys. I wasn't trying to tell the whole world I was by myself, but you know, I was appreciating skipping that line so I can get to the ride faster. But he felt so happy to know someone <laughs> who was traveling alone. And I just hope that I was able to kind of help him in that moment of his trip at Walt Disney World. Also with this growth, it has helped me become just a better adult overall. 
You know, when I was a kid, I did say, when I get grown, I'm gonna go to Disney anytime I want, I'm gonna buy what I want. But when you become an adult, you have to have fun, but squeeze it in. And I can remember having to set a budget for myself when I go to the parks, because I go too much, <laughs> not to have a budget, having a budget for my food and trinkets. And those are just things that has helped me grow to have self-control. And that might be something that can help you too on your solo trip, whether it be to Walt Disney World in Florida, or whether it be to Disneyland in Tokyo, or any other solo travel that you're thinking about doing. The next thing that I have come to appreciate with traveling along to Walt Disney World that has helped me remove the fear is the independence. Now, like I mentioned before, when you are going with family and friends, everybody is kind of on this wavelength of what are we gonna do together? I don't wanna do that. You have to compromise. No, you have to compromise. Okay, I'm taking care of this, but on those solo travels, everything is about what you want. And with that comes decisions that you have to make. You have to be extremely cautious and safe, which we have done safety tips about that. You have to think about where you want to eat. Do you want to spend this much? What about the souvenir? How are you going to get it back home? And yes, all of those decisions can kind of come down on you, but they do kind of make you more of an independent thinker. And because of that, it has made me have a very, very unique appreciation for independence and freedom. And I've always had it in me, but I think solo travel really brought it out to me. And I can remember enjoying that sense of freedom and saying, I wanna do this all the time. I want to enjoy theme parks and I want to share that experience with others. And that's when Theme Park Hipster started back in 2012, believe it or not. It started as an online diary that I could share my thoughts about theme parks and why I love them so much. And watching some of my favorite mentors, um, Ricky Briganti at Inside the Magic and Lou Mangiello at WWB Radio. And so that led to Theme Park Hipster because I was giving so much time to someone else on their job that I wasn't even enjoying life. I went to school to become a pharmacist and of course the career is great, but it got all of my time. I never got to do things that I enjoyed. I was very happy that I took that independence, that freedom, and was able to create something positive out of it, whether it is this business. So I hope that it can inspire you to do the same thing. That leads me to the next reason why you can do this and just forget about the fear of doing Disney World by yourself is it makes you courageous. If you can travel solo to Walt Disney World, especially if you are coming from the Pacific Islands, like one of our readers have come from the Pacific Islands against the will of her family because they were scared for her to travel that far, you will see that you are courageous. And when you have that power of courage, it makes you want to do so many things in life. For me, I started Theme Park Hipster. For you, it could be you starting that one business that you've always wanted to do or taking that trip that you've always wanted to take. But solo travel just does a lot of things to you mentally that you never thought would even happen and it changes you for the better to make you a better person so definitely think about the courage that you can get from solo traveling the next thing that traveling to Walt Disney World alone has made me kind of like take the fear away and just jumping in there is that I have learned to do things in small steps with any large goal that you accomplish whether it be finishing college getting that degree traveling the world with any major goal that you have in life you have to take small steps to get that goal and what i have realized at walt disney world and planning walt disney world vacation for other solo travelers is that if you have this dream vacation then start small yes plan out your trip have it ready but while you are at home waiting for your trip do little things like dining by yourself going to the movies by yourself Heck, having a mini staycation in your own town, discovering it by yourself. That way, when you get to Walt Disney World, you are overly confident that you can do this solo trip. I want you to be confident. I want you to do this. Now, my final perk that I have learned when traveling to Walt Disney World or just traveling alone that has helped me push that fear of traveling alone is that you learn to travel and to do things at your own pace. I cannot express how important this is if you have ever been to those big old family trips where you are going to Walt Disney World with family and friends, that constant, let's go to this ride. Okay, this person has to stop to use the bathroom. This person has to stop to eat. This person has to do this. It can really take the flow off your trip. And when you are there by yourself, that pace, whether it be slow because you choose to make it slow or whether it be fast because you choose to make it fast, 
it helps you to figure out how you want to just travel in general. You realize what kind of traveler you are and if you do decide to travel with other people, you wanna find someone who's compatible with you on that traveling. Maybe you're a person who likes to take your time, enjoy every little nook and cranny or maybe you're that person who likes to go from ride to ride to ride you discover what kind of traveler you are. Now remember that when I am talking about solo travel, this is in the regards to theme parks, especially Walt Disney World. Like I said, solo travel is not for everyone, but you should try it if it has been something that you're thinking about. It should not be scary to go to Walt Disney World. How you go to Walt Disney World by yourself and not be afraid is that you have a plan, you have a structure, you start planning things out, you talk to other solo travelers like the Theme Park Hipster group over on Facebook. You connect with me, I would definitely love to talk to you. You can email me at themeparkhipster at gmail.com and you just go out there and do it. The best way of getting something done is to jump out there and do it and I am here to help you take that leap. I'm gonna grab your hand and jump all over it. I really wanted to give you my personal thoughts of how I feel that you can do Walt Disney World confidently without fear. And until next time, happy park hopping hipsters.